Good evening. Welcome to Seeds of Victory. I'm Pastor Kelly Cross, where victory comes through the seed of the Word of God producing faith in your life. We've been talking about, is the Bible really anti-gay? This is part three. Uh, we've covered Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, how it was actually a case of, of gang rape and humiliation and inhospitality rather than uh, homosexuality. It says all the people of the city gathered around the house, and we covered that. Um, we also covered Leviticus last week, and just a couple more things on that. One thing you'll notice in Leviticus as well is that it talks about thing, other things being an abomination, such as uh, wearing mixed fabrics. You couldn't wear a cotton polyester blend. Um, you couldn't eat shellfish or lobster, things like that. Uh, those were considered ritually unclean. And we certainly don't hold those in the Christian faith today, uh, but yet many in the Christian faith still want to hold up you know, what we read in Leviticus last week uh, about a man with a man. But we did cover that as well. We know it, it was in the context of idolatry. We're going to go on tonight in Romans and see the same type of thing in the New Testament. Um, one thing about the book of Romans, the Apostle Paul, the main thing he wants to get across in this book is that whether you're a Jew who had the law or whether you were a Gentile who didn't have the law, all are guilty without Jesus Christ. All are guilty of sin and that the only way of redemption is through faith in Jesus Christ. The wages of sin, whether it be sin under the law or sin without the law, the wage is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's Romans 6.23. Uh, so as he's beginning to talk in the beginning of Romans, he, he points out how the, throughout the first part of Romans how the Jews had the law but they didn't keep it. And then he points out how the Gentiles uh, could know God through nature. They saw there was a God through nature and things like that, but they chose to honor the creation rather than the creator. We're going to talk about that in Romans chapter 1 today. Uh, the Apostle Paul, well, before let, we start, let's open with prayer. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that your words are spirit and they're life. Lord, I thank you that you said whosoever could come to you and you would in no wise cast them away. You love all people. You came to save us all, whether Jew or Greek, male or female, bond or free, black or white, gay or straight, bi or trans, no matter who we are, Lord, we are all one in Christ Jesus. And you came to redeem us all by your own blood. And all we have to do is put our faith in you, Lord. And we thank you that we are saved by grace through faith. And it's not of our own works. It's the gift of God. Thank you for that, Jesus. In your name, Lord, give us revelation in your word tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have a pen or pencil, you can grab it or your Bible to read along with me. We're going to look in Romans. And the Apostle Paul, it says in Romans chapter 1, verse 14, I'm, I'm a debtor to both Greeks and to the barbarians, both to wise and to unwise. So as much as, as in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. That's the good news, everyone who believes. For the Jew first and also for the Greeks. For in it, in what? In the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed against heaven, against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth to unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. Paul's talking about people who are not ignorant of the truth of God. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So even if they weren't Jewish, they could see that there was a God and, and uh, make effort to, to get to know him. They're not, they don't have any excuse. And it says, Because although they knew God, they, knew, they did not glorify Him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile, futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and birds, and four-footed animals, and creeping things. Now he's talking about idolatry very obviously here. These are people that exchange the glory of God 
to the glory of creation and worship the creation rather than the creator and made images well God's real clear even in the Ten Commandments don't have any graven images he alone is God but these people he's talking about are people that made images and that were like men or that like were like birds or four-footed animals or creeping things therefore now remember whenever you see therefore you gotta see what's there for therefore because these people didn't want to worship God they wanted to worship false worship false gods and images therefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness now remember we talked about ritual uncleanliness in worship he says God gave them up to uncleanliness to the lusts of their hearts to, to dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forevermore amen for this reason there we go again for this reason because they worshiped the cre creation rather than the creator who is blessed forevermore for this reason God gave them up to vile passions for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in lust for one another men with men consuming or I'm sorry committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting in other words they rejected God so God gave them over to what they wanted being filled now listen this, being filled with all unrighteousness sexual immorality wickedness covetousness malice maliciousness full of envy murder strife deceit evil mindedness they are whisperers backbiters haters of God violent proud boasters inventors of evil things disobedient to parents undiscerning untrustworthy unloving unforgiving unmerciful who knowing the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things are not only deserving of death are deserving of death not only do the same but also approve of those who practice them and then it says therefore you are inexcusable O man whoever you are who judge for in whatever you judge another you condemn yourself for you who judge practice the same things and again he's talking about how without you know we, when we turn away from God when people turn away from God they turn to false gods and because of that God gave them over to what they were desiring um, you know I read these passages as as a lesbian person that doesn't describe me I worship God I worship Jesus I am not filled with wickedness and envy and murder and hate God I love God you know just in that alone it tells me that doesn't describe me it doesn't describe who I am or many of my friends but we gotta take the context if you take the text out of context you're left with a con and the and that's where the church has been con for so many years to believe that just being gay was evil no it's the way these people played out their idolatry and as we said it was very common in that day and time for there to be female temple prostitutes male temple prostitutes that heterosexual men went into and and prostituted with both the men and the women they treated the man as a woman and a lot of them would dress like women to attract the men because they had to because they were heterosexual um, but God gave them and, and and this is the only passage of scripture in the whole Bible where many people teach this talking about lesbianism but notice it doesn't say women with women now from my studies up until just recently I didn't find anywhere where women were with women in the idolatrous practices uh, like the men and the women prostitutes were with with men but um, I guess in the temple of Aphrodite from what I've recently read um, they would have orgy type sessions where where the women would be with the women so but even if it was referring to women and women in this passage it's talking about in the context of idolatry and lust and and working evil um, worshiping false gods but notice it does say women exchange the natural use for what is against nature now one thing we need to understand when we read this word nature in the Greek language it's not talking about nature in, in, in general of what's for everyone it's talking about the nature of that individual 
what is against their own nature. Um, like the Bible talks about later on how God went against his own nature and grafted in the Gentiles into the vine of salvation. Um, so taking that in mind, it, it, it talks about how the women gave up what was natural for what was unnatural, the King James says. And that's all it says. Women gave up what was natural for what was unnatural. Well, if these women were temple prostitutes, it's not natural in any person to prostitute themselves for worship. God didn't put that in our nature. God put in our nature to worship, worship him in spirit and in truth, to have a love relationship with him. Um, and then it says likewise. So it's talking about the same as these women gave up what was natural. Likewise, men left the natural use of a woman. These were naturally heterosexual men and burned in lust for one another. And, and in the Greek language, that literally implies something they, they push themselves to do. Men committing, with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind. It's talking about idolatry. The whole context is idolatry. Exchanging the glory of God for the creation. Making images. You know, doing, being filled with evil mindedness and, and hating God and being unloving and unmerciful well without God we could all go that direction without Jesus and that's the whole point of the book of Romans if you read it as a whole the apostle Paul is saying in one place he says God is him, has imprisoned all in disobedience so that he might be merciful to all that's the good news of the gospel God declared us all guilty. All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. It says in Romans 3.23, all of us have sinned and fallen short. It's through Jesus, through faith in Jesus that we're saved by his grace. And, uh, you know, this is very obviously, as, as we've read, I mean, I think you can pretty much just read this passage for itself and see that the context is idolatry, which we know was common practice. Uh, way back in Genesis and even in Jesus' time, and the apostles time very common practice so you know I think we can rule this out as well it's not talking about a loving committed homosexual relationship it's, it's absolutely not in the context it's talking about idolatry so next week we will go on to the two other scriptures in the New Testament that have been mistranslated homosexual um, or something to that effect uh, by translators. We'll look at what those Greek words actually mean uh, and what are some of the possibilities. Then one of them is actually even a slang term uh, that the Apostle Paul coined but was also used in other, uh, some other Greek literature. Uh, so it'll be very interesting. Uh, and then after that we're going to go on to some positive things the scripture says um, about us in the gay community. I pray this is blessing you. I pray that uh, you're learning something as we study this. Um, like I said, it, it talked about going against nature. Well, if you are a homosexual person, it goes against your nature, your intrinsic nature, to be with someone of the opposite sex. So when people in our community are getting married to the opposite sex just to please the church or just to you know, do what people are telling them is right, they're going against their own nature that God put in them. And the Lord doesn't want us to go against what's in us. He wants us to be who we are, be who he's created us to be, and live for him with all our hearts. There's a special call and a purpose for the gay community. God made us this way for a reason. We're going to get into that later on. I hope you tune in again and, and get a hold of that. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, just call on him right now. He loves you. He made you who you are. He wants to set you free from depression. He wants to heal you everywhere you hurt. He loves you so much. And then eventually wants to take you to heaven to be with him forever. The place of joy. Heaven's going to be the happening place. It's going to be a place of celebration and love. And everything good that we experience here on earth is from God. And so without Jesus, we will not go to heaven. We would be separated from him for eternity in hell. And he does not want that. Every good thing that you ever experience here, you would never experience again. Because all good comes from God. And... For those who are believers, the only evil we'll ever experience is here on earth. Because in heaven, 
the devil will be done away with. He will be cast into the lake of fire and no evil will ever happen again. There will be no more dying, no more sorrow. Uh, that's the, our hope of the future. If you want to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, just ask Him into your heart right now. Just say, I, I turn away from sin, Lord. I ask You to come into my heart and cleanse me of all my sins. I, I receive You into my heart and into my life as my Lord and my Savior. Save me, Jesus, and I will be saved. Thank You, Lord. And if you need healing, I just pray that healing would be released to you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be made whole from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. Be whole in your emotions. Be healed. Be set free in Jesus' name. If God has touched you, please let us know. We want to know these broadcasts are a blessing. We want to hear if you've been healed. We want to be here if you, we want to hear if you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you're in the Columbus, Ohio area, please feel free to come see us at Master's Commission New Covenant Church. We would love to meet you and let you become a part of our family. Check out our website at www.mcnchurch.org. God bless you. We love you and God loves you. Amen.